Good afternoon, everybody. This is North Carolina Prepper. Um, as you know, I got a bunch of goodies from Radio Shack when they closed, and I had some extra cable here, and I needed to make a bell one, a one-to-one -one RF choke, for to prevent the RF signal from basically heating up the coax instead of transmitting and bringing it back in the house. Because without the bell one on, uh, when I key up on my packet radio and stuff, I tend to lock up my uh, touchpad on my laptop. So. I didn't want to cut the ends off here because they're already sealed so I've ordered some more cable and I'll do a more per permanent installation when I get that and I'll put it inside a PVC tube but I really like this coax here it's very nice and it's sealed it's not it's not very good for um, VHF like 144 or 440 or I mean 2 meters or 70 centimeter bands um, it's kind of lossy when you get to those. Okay, here's a picture from the box. If you look at 100 foot of the cable, 100 foot length, and you're transmitting about 100 hertz, you're going to lose 2.4 decibels. Now, we're doing half of that. So, if we were going to use it at, for a 2 meter or whatever, yeah, 144, 2 meters, we'd be doing about 2.1 decibels per 100 foot, or I mean, uh, per 50 foot, because it's only a 50 foot length, so it's half of that. But it'll be a lot less at where we're going for our frequencies of HF. Now, you can determine the maximum you can bend the cable without stressing the coax or the uh, inner filament. Um, you don't want the insulation to break down between the two. So you can, you can make it into a circle. And as long as the circle doesn't deform, that's as much as you can get. Now, if you look um, in the next picture here. I'm starting to stress it and it's becoming more like a teardrop shape. So we don't want to really go that far with it. We don't want to put stress because the coax will get hot and the foam core or whatever core this is, it's radio shack, it's kind of cheap, so it's probably a cheap core. It'll it'll um it'll move over and it'll touch the center braid. Or the center braid will touch the outer braid and you'll get a, a short in there and that's not something you want. So for the coax I'm using we're looking at about three and a quarter inches maybe three but about three and a quarter inches is as much as you want to uh, confine this cable okay so we need between 18 and 21 feet to get the proper reactants here Re yeah reactants I think okay so we need that to make this ugly ballum or this one-to-one -one air choke ballum or one-to-one -one choke uh, you need 18 20 feet and that'll cover about uh, 10 meters down to like 160 but we're gonna actually do a little bit less here because it doesn't fit but 18 to 21 feet is what you need doesn't matter how much you have or um, how tight or how many coils it, it deals with the capacitance and all the goodies of the coil now you can do it like this they call it a bramble uh, this is not good because the the last coil and the first coil can touch and it shorts out and basically you're putting voltage over the exterior of the coil and all kinds of math that would give Pythagoras a headache. So you want it in a linear procession like up a, up a form. In this case I'm using a sriracha bottle. But if it turns out the way I want and everything works we'll go ahead and move it inside a PVC pipe and get the right coax and cut it down better coax. But I just want to test it for right now and make it. Okay, so if you look at here, I didn't quite have enough uh, bottle. So we got about a foot left over, so that gives us about 20 feet of uh, coax wrapped around there. So it might be around 3 megahertz um, at the end, so it might go to 80 meters. It's still within spec. I, I generally around 20 and 40 meters anyway for my purposes. But let me go ahead and show you what it looks like uh, hanging from the antenna. I'm using this on a dipole made of ham sticks. There it is. It's going to hang like that. You don't want it to touch the pole itself or any conductor. I'll probably put some standoffs on it and then zip tie the standoffs and put it on there that way. But that's basically it. Can't really go out and test it today because we have thunder and lightning out here. So I'm not going to put up a lightning rod uh, outside the thunder and lightning. It doesn't seem like a good idea. All right. Well, that's just what I've been up to lately. All right, everybody. Have a great one. This is North County Prepper. Please rate, subscribe, and have a great day. Thanks.